Welcome my crafty loving friends to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. Today I have some great thrift flips for you with secondhand items and it's going to be so cool. Wait till you see what I do, especially the one at the end. You're going to love it. This little wired cage was a Christmas ornament. It had a uh, picture of Santa on the front of it that was metal and I was able to pull it off with little to no damage to the front. So I decided to, it was green, so I decided to spray paint it black and then take some floral wire and put it over the hole in the middle because I wanted to make a little nest and put it in there and I knew it might fall through and I thought making some little crisscrosses with wire would help keep it in. So I took some uh, Spanish moss and just kind of formed it into a little uh, bird's nest and just kept fluffing with it and messing with it until I got it to the shape that I wanted. And it will sit right in that little cup very nicely because it's just a small little little wire uh, holder. I found this little bird at Dollar General for a dollar and I thought he was really cute for uh, to paint up. He's cute the way he is, but not the color that I want. So I took some moss colored paint from Waverly and I'm just doing one coat around the whole outside of him. The one coat seemed to cover very nicely and I really love this color. It's very springy and uh, I don't know. I just think it's really cute. I'm now taking some antique wax with on my brush and just brushing it on to the little bird. I'm trying to get it into like his wings, the little cracks and crevices and places like that. Uh, I give him a whole paint job all over so that he's sealed, but I wanted to make him look old and I wanted that wax to sit right down into uh, the little cracks and crevices. When I wiped it back, it would stay there if you can see that right there. And I'm going to take some ribbon. I think this is from Dollar Tree, maybe. It's a burlap ribbon with the lace down the middle of it. I really like this. I think it's very pretty. And I think this is going to turn out to be kind of a, like a dainty little spring decor. So I wanted to use something with lace. That's just what I pictured with this. So I am just gluing it around the bottom because there's nothing in the bottom and it just looks like void space. I was trying to kind of cover it up and dress up the outside of the little birdhouse. And I glue that all the way around. Then I take some more lace. I think this is from Dollar Tree as well. It's just plain lace, but it's very pretty and dainty, and I'm gonna make a little bow, and that's gonna go on the top. There used to be a ring or a, some kind of something up there so it was a little bit sharp and I wanted to glue it somewhere. I, here I'm trying to figure out where but then I figured out I wanted it on the top. I took a little flower and put it in there with my little bird and then decided I wanted to do a little tag. This little bird paper is from Tim Holtz Aviary Paper. I just cut a little piece out and then it's a little wooden tag that I have and I put some Mod Podge on it and then I'm gonna put Mod Podge over it again to make sure that it sticks down nicely. And then I will let it dry and I sand off the edges so I get the excess paper off. I use a skewer to poke a hole in uh, the top where I can hang my string and I just took a piece of twine and put that through so that I could hang it. I'm gonna take a little bit of antique wax on a paper towel and go around the edges and give it an aged antiqued look. So I'm gonna just wipe it around the edges and then I'll go back with a different part of the paper towel that's clean and just kind of brush it and just spread it around. I do go in just a little bit in further, but I wanna make it look aged around the edges. And then I also do the back just in case that little tag gets flipped around and you can see uh, the back of it. So I wanted that to be stained as well. So now I'm going to hook that to the top right next to my little bow that I have. And I have my little bird inside. And then I decided it was missing a little something and I had these uh, matching, four matching uh, buttons. So I put one on the top on the top of my 
bow. And then I'm going to put three on the front just to dress it up a little bit. And then this little bird cage is done. I rescued this basket from Goodwill for a couple dollars. It's structurally okay, but it's been beat up a little bit. It has some broken uh, pieces on it, so I'm showing you here. I've got broken pieces all over it. So I went around the whole thing and took some hot glue and just glued down those edges that were loose, that weren't connected anymore, so that it would help it structurally to stay together. And that seemed to work okay. You can still see the glue a little bit when it creeps out from behind some of the, the broken parts, but here you can see I'm going to be staining this basket up, so pretty much you won't be able to see it. This is my wax uh, paint water mixture that I make up. It's eight ounces of antique wax, and I use the same jug. The wax comes in, and I add the eight ounces of water, and then I add like a teaspoon of black paint your choice whatever you want to use and I mix it all together in a jar and I just keep it for when I need it. I love using this kind of stain on my baskets. It gives them a deep rich look and just dresses them up so much. And then it gives the highs and lows that you can see here. I'm going to take my black and tan homespun material and cut a piece big enough to fit inside of my basket to cover the walls of the basket and go down to the bottom. So what I do is I take a little bit of glue underneath the lip of the basket and add my material from the outside. So when I flip it into the basket, you have a nice trim around the top so that when you flip that back in like that, you don't see the edges and they don't fray. And it looks really nice and neat. I make sure I overlap just a little bit where I first started and where I end and I just glue that over it so that it will, it doesn't come apart and you can see the inside of the basket. I'm gonna tuck this in and then I'm gonna show you how I finish off the bottom. I don't think I've ever showed you how I do that. And it's very simple with just some cardboard and more material. So I just go around and inspect where I glued this down around the edges. And as you can see, I'm coming up to a spot that didn't quite get glued up very well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue around the edge where I want it to stick, and then I kind of roll the material up into that glue so that it will stick down underneath the lip of the basket. Most baskets have a little lip like this, and if they don't, you can just create one. I'm gonna use a little bit of this Waverly Maze uh, yellow paint. This is beautiful paint, and I watered it down in this little cup. I don't need a lot but I'm gonna take it and give some color to this basket. So I'm not really doing a dry brush, but I am just kind of brushing lightly across the basket and letting the paint just sit where it wants to sit. And I'm just gonna do this all around the basket and I just wanna give it some color and make it look a little brighter and just give it some character. Now to age my basket a little more, I'm gonna take my brush that I put my stain on and I'm gonna just not even dip it, I'm just gonna use whatever's on the brush and go back and wipe it across the paint. So it's going to dull down that yellow paint, it's gonna make it look aged and like it's been uh, weathered and I think it looks really, really cool. It just dulls that down that yellow paint some. There you go, you can see it there. I think that looks so cool. So now I'm gonna show you how I do the bottom. The bottom of this basket wasn't super sturdy, so if you were to put something in it and walk off with it, I think you know, it wouldn't be very sturdy. So I took a piece of cardboard, flipped it over, and measured the bottom with it, just roughly, 
to make sure that it was going to fit in there and it does nicely. Took a piece of my homespun material to match the sides of my basket and I'm gonna glue it from the bottom. So I'm gluing the bottom of the piece of cardboard and then I'm gonna just glue the material on there and then flip it over. And I make sure that I have a little bit of uh, some extra around the edges so when I fold it up, you can't see them. Now this is gonna be super sturdy, but it is gonna give it a little bit more sturdiness. If you wanted it more sturdy, you could probably use a piece of scrap wood um, or a couple pieces of cardboard put together, but this is gonna work for this basket. I don't think it's gonna have anything too, too heavy in it. So I just, as you can see here, I just glue it down and glue down my edges to make them look a little bit neater and so that they won't fray and unravel. Once I get it all glued, I'm gonna stick it down in the bottom and that finishes off the inside of the basket really nicely. Now I have this ribbon that I got from, I think this was from Timu. I did an order from them uh, after they had contacted me to be an affiliate and do some uh, videos for them. And I wanted to check out their products first before I did that. And I did an order on my own with my own money. And it, I really love this ribbon or trim, I guess. Uh, I also got it in a lighter color. It's the same pattern, but a lighter color. And I thought it would look really nice on the handles because the leather handles weren't the greatest on this basket. And then I thought it would look really good around the edges as well. Give it a little bit of uh, a dress up for this poor little basket. So then I just go all the way around with that. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush that I had my stain on. And I'm going to go across the ribbon and just give it a little more of a darker look. I, it almost didn't quite match. So here I'm just brushing it over, not super dark, but just giving it a little bit of a darker color to match everything else on the basket. And I think it did a really good job of it. I've been shopping on Zazzle again for some decoupage paper and I found a few different prints that I ordered and this is one of them and I just love it. It's a rooster and a hen with a little baby chick and it's just so dainty and cute and I love it. So I'm gonna just take my iron and iron out the middle kind of fold or wrinkle that I have in any other ones and then I'm gonna take this tray that I got from Goodwill I got this for $5 at Goodwill. It's a Hobby Lobby tray. It's got a little bite taken out of it. Not really a bite, but it's got a, a chip out of the, the bottom. And I wanna add this cute little paper onto the top of it. So this could be a sign. I left the hangers right on there, and or it also could be a tray, either way. So first thing I'm gonna do is take some water and go around the edges so that I can rip them and make them uh, look not so straight, like the corners are gonna be rounded a little bit, and the water just helps that decoupage paper rip off a lot easier, and you can control it a little bit on how much it's gonna rip and things like that. So I'm just gonna go all the way around the paper doing this, it's a really good way to get kind of an organic, uh, random tear on there instead of trying to tear it without using the water. Because decoupage paper is just so uh, fragile, this works really well with a little bit of water on it. Once I got that all the way around, I decided I wasn't going to paint because it was already a light colored uh, uh, paint on the top. So I'm just going to take some 
Mod Podge and Mod Podge the middle and that's where I'm going to start to put my picture on. There's no rhyme or reason on how I do it. Sometimes I do the whole tray and I'll put the whole piece of paper on. Sometimes I'll start on the end. This time I decided to start in the middle. <laughs> so I'm just going to make sure that it's where I want it and all the edges and everything are as even as I can get them and the page or the picture is straight. And then I just put that on there. And once that's down, I go ahead and add some Mod Podge onto one end. And I'm going to stick that down. Now I'm using some plastic wrap and I'm going to take the plastic wrap and put it on top because paper once the paper once it gets wet it is very fragile I use the saran wrap over the top of it and then I can use my roller and roll out any of the uh, bubbles or uh, folds that I get in the paper or wrinkles there's still going to be some which is okay because I'm going to sand a little bit when you sand that it just kind of takes that little bit of a ridge off from any of your wrinkles and it just makes it look more aged. So now I'm just going to do the other side and smooth that out and get that stuck down. Again using my plastic wrap and just going over it with my roller to get as many of those wrinkles and bubbles flattened out. It works so well. And I'm just going to take a little bit of Mod Podge and go around the edge and make sure because I had torn that, uh, some of those edges don't quite stay down. So I'm just going to take some Mod Podge and go over the top of it. So as you can see, there are still some wrinkles there and that's okay. Like I said, when I lightly sand it, those will kind of uh, sand off and it'll leave you with a nice uh, aged look. So... I meant to do this before I put the paper on, but I was so excited to get the paper on the tray that I forgot. So I'm going to sand down this little this little chip on the bottom and get that so it's not all uh, jagged or splintery. And then I'm going to go around the whole top of the frame and just kind of sand it a little bit. They were kind of like little splinters around it, so I wanted to make sure that it was nice and smooth. Then I'm just gonna put a coat of Mod Podge over the top of my paper to seal it in and make sure that it stays down really well. I'm gonna take a little bit of my dark stain that I have and I'm gonna just go lightly over my frame around the edges and give them a little highlight and just make it look aged and weathered like it's just been around a while. This is while the, the picture is still a little bit wet with the Mod Podge, so I try not to go on the paper. I'm trying to just do the edges and the wood, and then from there, uh, once it dries, I'll show you how I age the picture. Now that that's dry, I'm going to take my sandpaper and lightly sand over the top. I don't want to do it too heavy, but I do want to get rid of some of those wrinkles or at least make them look a little bit uh, scuffed up and aged. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush that I use to put the stain on and just wipe it. Just kind of do a circle motion around the bottom. I want it darker around the outside edges. And then I'll work in just a little bit near the middle. I don't want to cover up the picture too, too much, but I do want to bring in, I want to age it from the outside in. And then I just take my paper towel and wipe it back a little bit. Because it's Mod Podged, it will come off fairly easy, but it still sticks in certain spots. I hope you enjoyed my aged vintage projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. And I'll leave a link down in the description on some of the products that I use today, the ones that I can find. And don't forget to check out Etsy. I will have some of my projects for sale on my page. Thanks for watching.
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.